listen to this, uh, I think, very thoughtful email that was sent to us. Uh, this is by a listener who signs his name as Game Warden, <laughs> which, of course, is not his name. He writes, Dear Dad... <laughs> Uh, uh, he, what he should have written is, Dear Number One. <laughs> In fact, I, I wish you would all address me now as Number One, please. Would you do that? Number One. Thank you. Uh, dear Number One. I've no <laughs> Number One. I've noticed, I've noticed that just like women don't care about how they look for their husbands, they also don't care about how old they are for their husbands. You often talk about how women wait until they're about 29. Then suddenly any date becomes their tag soulmate. Because she knows the party's over. And the wild sex is over, too. Now that, quote, the tread is worn off the tires, it's like throwing a hot dog down the hall, end quote. <laughs> Let's talk about mixing metaphors here. He says, obviously, she'd rather use up her youth getting into exclusive parties, going past the lines at clubs, free dinners, free vacations, and other various things that, quote, dates, quote, boyfriends, and other assorted various sugar daddies will give them for free in return for the mere possibility of a quick one. But now that her well is drying up and she is fast approaching her expiration date, she doesn't seem to care about how her, quote, one true soulmate Never got any of that. How she wasted all of that on herself instead of allowing her future husband even a good ten years or so of at least the memory of her as a hot young chick. That would go along, by the way, with the uh, the online profiles that women have on dating sites where they say, I've had my fun and now I'm ready to settle down. <laughs> That means you're not going to have any fun with her like everybody else who got a ride in the backseat with her. You're not going to get that kind of fun. It's time for you now to donate your sperm and your paycheck. You can drive around an old used car with a turkey neck. That's what it's time for. Yes. Game Warden says... Tom, women of old used to have something called a dowry, which was money that a man was paid by her parents in order to marry her. And in many countries, this is still true. Today in America, I say that a woman's youth is her dowry. And women are spending it all on themselves while expecting us men to marry them after they're fairly worthless. What's more, they want to fast talk us into marriage for which we're not compatible. And then say... You have to work to make a good relationship, just like you say when responding that it's the wrong relationship. By the way, that is how I feel. If you have to compromise to strengthen your relationship, it's the wrong relationship. If you have to work to have a good relationship, it's not a good relationship. If you have to talk incessantly about the relationship, it's not the right person. He says, specifically, if a woman wastes her youth slutting around, then obviously she doesn't care much about her future husband who has to settle for some used-up old bag. Of course, they always excuse it by saying something like, well, then I was young and foolish, now I know better. To which I respond, well, true, with age come wisdom, but I don't want to date my grandmother. <laughs> Tom, I say that a fool and her youth are soon parted. Could you do a show about this, not just about women who do it, but how selfish they are for wasting their youth on being sluts instead of on their future husband? And then, after they so happily accepted all those free gifts and favors solely on account of their youth, they suddenly expect us not to care if they're 18 or 80? This is just one more reason that a man should never marry, especially an American woman, signed Gay Morton. You know, they're, uh, awkwardly put in a variety of ways, but, but he makes some very good points in here. The fact is that a lot of these women, they, yes, they get the free trips to Cancun. Yes, they get money. Yes, they get taken out. Yes, they get stuff bought for them. And then one day, they, as they say on their online profiles, uh, they've had their fun. And now they're ready to settle down. Or now they're ready to get serious. Or the ones, even worse, the ones who say, you ever see the online profile where women say, 
Friends first. You ever see that? Friends first. And then if you read the profile, it goes on to say that, you know, she's not just going to jump into the sack with you. Because she's already learned her lesson. She's already done that with how many people? Starting now, I'm only going to have sex with guys I got to know first. You will have to be my friend first. And maybe down the line we can talk. This is somebody who is now, uh, as far as she's concerned, a former slut. By the way, those former sluts, if they meet a rock star, a famous actor, a rich guy, there are exceptions to their rule. It's friends first if you're just an average nice guy. But if she meets somebody with money, power, or fame, all bets are off. Do you agree with the letter writer? Do you agree with what I'm saying here? I'd like to find out. Tom like it. Like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. My husband listens to your radio station. Every time he comes home after listening to your radio station, he's like in a bad mood really? all the time. Well, he, he must enjoy it. He listens all the time. I don't know. He, I, I don't know what it is. You're just brainwashing him somehow, and I don't mm. know that. It's the Tom Likas Show. In Southern California. That's right. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being part of the program. We're talking about the email from Game Warden, who writes it. It says that women sell their youth off to various guys to get into clubs without waiting in line, exclusive parties, free dinners, free vacations, and then by the time they hit thirty and the eggs are ready to start drying up, uh, suddenly they're ready to get serious. But what guy wants to drive a car with uh, 75,000 miles on it? What do you think about that? one 800 I wouldn't mind renting a car with 75,000 miles on it. I've been to the airport. You know, you get one of those cars uh, for 19.99 a day. It's uh, You know, they didn't wash it, and uh, they should have vacuumed out the back seat, and the ashtrays still have uh, cigarette butts in them and stuff. But you pay a 19.99 a day. These women want you to pay full price. And they've got 75,000 miles on them, and frankly, they need their ashtray vacuumed out. I love comparing women to cars. There are so many analogies there. It's it's beyond belief. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Andre on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, long time, first time. Thank you so much. Um, I have a quick question for you. Um, I completely agree with majority of stuff you say, but I'm always singled out because I have a fiance and I'm young. I'm 23. I completely understand. But by this letter, it's kind of confusing me. Is it saying that if we don't find someone who's jaded or someone who's all leathered and worn out that we can get married? It, no. First of all, you're not supposed to get married. Not okay, according to our rules. This letter, letter. I don't care what the letter says. Uh, and by the way, he's not saying that it's okay to get married either. He's just talking okay. about guys who uh, who meet women who expect them to to, to to expect the guys to marry them uh, when they're already dried up old prunes. Okay, so if they're not dried up old prunes, say if they're the best woman in the entire world, and I'm not saying mine is, but if we can find that, is that something that we should? No, marry? you know what? You still don't want to get married because the cost is too great. But what? It, okay, so. I think my personal views, a lot of things, and I know I'm young, has to do with just how our society nowadays is, period. Like, we have so many problems from a recession to so many broken homes just because people want to be too strong and want to be too independent. And we can just go back to the beginning of time, like, say, when your parents got married, things would be a lot easier and a lot simpler. We wouldn't have as many problems, right? Because I remember how you said, like, broken homes, that's where a lot of, like, mass murders and a lot of, uh, how do you say, like, the Unabomber was a product of a broken home. So... I didn't I, say that. Um, uh, actually, I think like three or four weeks ago, you told me most most like domestic terrorists that we have here, from the Unabomber to Jeffrey Dahmer and people like actually, that. Actually, that was not me. Program. That was not me. I didn't say that. Now, I'm, not, I'm, I'm sure I have said that uh, a children of single mothers are more likely to be carjackers, more likely to be uh, terrorists, more likely to be drug addicts, more likely to be alcoholics. That I did say. Okay. And I say it all the time. But I don't know the specifics of all of those people. And frankly, I think the Unabomber was not from a broken family because it was his brother that turned him in. 
Okay, so what is that? I actually, I don't know the facts on that, and I can't go. Well, that's right the now. point. I never, I never said this because I don't know the facts of all of those individuals. Okay, so when, in what scenarios is it okay to have kids, and what scenarios is it okay? Well, to you marry? can have kids any time. Getting married though is never a good idea for men. Even with a prenup, like you're saying before. I, a prenup, yourself. if you insist on doing something stupid, at least get a prenup. Like I would say, you know, if you're going to do uh, uh, skydiving in a very dangerous location, well, you should get insurance. But I wouldn't recommend skydiving in dangerous locations. Because one of the, I, like I said, I completely understand what you said. Why do you need to be married? Why do you need that? Well, I'm a product of a broken home, I think. And without even going to counseling, I honestly feel because I am a product of a broken home, it gives me a little bit of stability. No, it doesn't. You don't know. In fact, it, it's quite the opposite because you don't know what a stable home is like and you don't know how to do it. But I know how I feel in a jacked up home, so I know what not to do. No, no, but you don't know what to do. And most people, most people end up repeating the behaviors of their parents, even when their parents are abusive, even when their parents uh, are obviously doing the wrong thing. As much as people say, I'm not going to be like the, my parents, they end up being like their parents. Well, since 18, when I moved out, I'm doing a hell of a lot better than my parents. I make twice as much money as them and have twice as much education as them. That I doesn't mean you're going to do everything right. And on top of that, one out of two marriages ends in divorce. I and completely understand that. that yeah. You already said that. That's already, that started happening after the Internet era, after people started And that's, that's when we live. That's when, we, that's when you're thinking about getting married, after all of that. Not before. You want to get married in 1948? Fantastic. If you can pull that off, get in the time machine and go get married. Well, it's not, you don't have to necessarily get into a time machine. Like, yeah, you do. Place where we yes, differ. you because do. You, 50 percent, excuse me, over 50 percent end in divorce, but 40-something percent, they still stay together. Uh, yeah, so but, there is hope out there. But, pal, you've got, you've got a better chance of, of, for example, do you have car insurance? Yeah. Yeah. What are the odds you're going to have a car accident? Um, not Any given day. Likely. What? What? Thousand to one, ten thousand to one, a hundred thousand to one. The odds are you going to get divorced are two to one. They're even. I no, no correction. Let me get the the odds right. The odds are even, one to one. Okay. So we shouldn't even, even with a prenup or anything like that. We should never take a chance. There's no point in it. You do not need to be married. But what if you are successful in your marriage, though? You don't, like, I, you don't I, know I, if you'd be successful, and you don't need to do it. And you don't know what the other person will do. You don't. You think you do, but you don't. But you wouldn't have been so great at what you're doing unless you took a chance. No, right? no, pal, I, <laughs> I took a chance on something that uh, if I failed, I would not have to pay half of everything I ever earned. And with a prenup, I won't be able to pay half of everything that I have. Let me tell you something. Son, um, first of all, you'll never get the kind of prenup I had because if you're that much in love, you'd be scared to death to say no community property, no spousal support under any circumstances. You'll never do it. You won't have the balls to do that. Uh, I highly doubt that. Man. I highly doubt you. And why do you, again, you haven't told me why you need to sign a legal agreement. Why? For what? Uh, <laughs> and the reason is because you've got no game and you've got no goddamn balls. That's why. Uh, no game, that's a lie. Oh, yeah? Uh, and no balls, that's also a lie. Well, Trust then, me. Then why, then why don't you just say no? I don't want to get married. Because, you know, it's like, I, it's going to be, a, you're going you're gonna to think it's completely dumb, but she deserves it. What do you mean she deserves it? Deserves I've what? I've been with her for three years and she deserves it. You have the option of giving her voluntarily anything you want if things don't work out. Why tie a noose around your neck? Why not just right. give her whatever you choose to give her when it's over? Well, I was trying to give you, I didn't want to lead into it because I know my girlfriend isn't, oh, excuse me, fiance isn't perfect, but you talk about it all the time. I mean, excuse, you don't talk about it all you, the time. You're not answering the question. No, no, stop right there. Uh, stop with your filibuster. I want the answer to the question I asked you. All right. 5'11", blonde hair. No, no, blonde. no, no. Stop. I want you to answer the question that I asked you before you forget what it was, please. Okay. What was the question? See, you already forgot the question because you had no intention of answering it, did you? No, I want you to repeat it just so I can make sure I answer your question this time. I'm not going to. By the way, if you try another filibuster, I'm going to hang up the phone. I won't try another filibuster. Why can't you just give her whatever you want to give her if things don't work out instead of signing a legal agreement?
Be specific. Honest, I think I found a really cool girl. That doesn't mean anything. Why do you need to sign a legal agreement? You can do the same things without signing the agreement. And the reason is because you're a pussy, because you're pussy whipped, and because she's demanding it, and you're going to roll over and give it to her, and you're going to rationalize it by saying she deserves it. You have no need to be married, and frankly, if she didn't force you into this, you wouldn't be agreeing to it. I don't think I was forced into it, honestly. Really? Whose I, idea I was? Whose idea was it? Whose idea was it? Say that again. Oh, Jesus Christ! My phone's breaking. Whose up. idea was this? Say that one more time. Shut up, and listen to the entire sentence, please. Okay. Whose idea? was this. Don't tell me it was both of yours. Somebody, somebody came into the room and said, Honey, you know what we should do? We should get married. Who said that? It was actually me. Within the first six months. You're an I idiot. Think. You Because you're an idiot. Because I'm an idiot. Yes. So anybody who decides to ever, ever get married is considered an idiot. It is stupid. Uh, by the way, I've done it, and I was an idiot for doing it. Okay, you did it. You did it three or four times. Right? I did it four times, and I was a real idiot. I was a moron. Okay. And so are you. Wow. Well, I didn't think it was going to turn into an escalated situation. Where I was a moron. I was just. Well, okay. again, I'm, I'm thrilled that you listen to the show. I think it's wonderful. But here's the thing: you're calling up here, and you want me to agree with you. I don't want you to agree with me. I'm trying to. I'm trying to ask if it's okay at any time to ever have a child or. There is no. I didn't. I, you can have children any time. There is no need to be married. So you see, not one benefit in being married. Not to a man. No, no emotional feeling at all. Not to a man. Not to a man. Do you love your girlfriend? Oh uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, you like being with her. Yeah. But sex. Besides, just besides is the sex good? Is the sex good? Um, uh, she's a virgin. She's a virgin. Are are you religious or something? Uh, her family is extremely. And <laughs> so you're marrying somebody with no experience. Yeah, I thought that's the way you probably would want it. You talk about all the, like the eighteen or nineteen. No, year I don't want that. them to have a hundred thousand miles on them, but but five thousand would be okay. Wow. Okay. I mean, the fact is, you don't stand a benefit here. I don't stand, like... You have everything now that you would have if you were married. You love her. She loves you. Well, you don't have sex. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, so, you have, see, right. you, have to, you have to... And this is another part of the thing. You have to marry her to hit sex. So now it's becoming clearer. That's why you're marrying her, because in order to get sex, she won't have sex with you without you being married to her. So now it's starting to unpeel like an onion. You okay. have to marry her. You have no choice. So you're saying it's impossible for an attractive guy who makes a decent amount of money to willingly want to get married just for the most I didn't say it's impossible for a guy to want something stupid. It's entirely possible. Okay. It's entirely possible for a man to want something stupid. But in your case, you want to have sex with her, and she won't have sex with you. So I, you I have to, sex. Trust me, it's definitely. Oh, not sex. oh yes, yes. You had enough sex. And yet you're 23 and you've had enough sex. You are so full of crap. Are you serious? I There's not a man. You know, uh, by the way, if you've had enough sex, why are you getting married? Because I've had enough sex. I've had enough. So sex then, why bother getting no. married? Why don't you just become a priest if you've had enough sex? No, well, that's right. They they do an altar boys. What? Had... Say that again. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I've had enough sex with random girls. That's exactly what I'm trying. That's to say. not my point. She won't have sex with you unless you marry her. And I respect that. I respect no, that. it's not that you respect that. It's that you are pussy whipped, and you want to get what you want to get, and you're going to do it any way you have to, including doing something that would not be good for you. If I just wanted to have sex with anyone, I would just go and cheat on her. That's, That's not my point. point. You you want to have Your sex with her. Sex. I mean, you you want to have sex, sex with, with her. her. You want to have sex with her. You started to describe what she looks like, and you're going to tell us that she's a ten or a nine and a half or whatever, and she's so beautiful, and she's this and that, and that's why she deserves it. She deserves it. No, it's not that she deserves it. She refused you. You tried to get uh, into the sack with her. You tried, and she said no. 
And so, so what then, would you say and so if I said then, I was having sex with her then. If I said I was having sex, you're not. With her, you already her. told me the truth. You're not having sex with her. And now it becomes clear. You tried to have, as much as you say you've had enough sex. You also tried to have sex with her, and she's the first one who said no. So now that she's the first one who said no, oh, you can't have that. So now you're even willing to marry her to get her into the sack. Okay. Wow, you read me so well. I know. I, I guess that's what you wanted to hear. I'm, I'm still not going to stop listening. Yeah, well, to you're not religious. You are not religious. You are not spiritual. You do not believe in the religion she believes in. You are not doing this because you believe in women being virgins or that you believe in in in, in being married before having sex. You're not doing it for that reason. You think she's hot and you want to nail her, and the only way you're going to get that is marrying her. Well, let me re-answer your question the same way I asked when I asked her father if I can. And he asked me why, and I'd say, I say I just think we'd be perfect. Honestly, think she'd be the best. I see how his wife has raised his family, and I think like she'd be the best mother for my children. How would you know? You're 23 years old. What do you know about that? What do I know about what? I, like I said, I know what it's like to come from a broken home, and I know. It doesn't mean anything. Home. It doesn't mean you know anything uh, any more than your father was a brain surgeon, and you know how to be a brain surgeon. It doesn't mean anything. So I don't know what I don't want or what I do want. That's what you're telling me. No, no, you, me you, you think you know what you want. As I always give the example on the air, and, I, and this is a true story. At okay. 12 years old, I wanted to drive a fire truck. And I thought that was a great idea because... I know how to drive. I've been in the car with my father, and I've seen him start the engine, and I've seen him shift the gears, and I've seen him uh, put his foot on the gas, and I've seen him move forward. And so okay. what? how hard can that be? I am ready to drive a fire truck, and I think that's good for me. Okay? Now, I thought that was good for me. Do you think that's good for me? Sure. At 12. You think it's a good idea for 12-year-old boys to be driving fire trucks? No, it's not a good idea. But every 12-year-old boy wants to do something like that, fly a plane, drive a, a sports car, whatever. Every 12-year-old boy has a, has a wish like that. Uh, but what do they know? But they're 12. That's not my I point. At 23, you are just as immature about this as a 12-year-old boy is about driving a fire truck. You know nothing about what marriage is about. You know nothing about relationships. I'm tell well, again, the numbers bear me out on this. The younger you are when you get married, the more likely it is you get divorced. By the way, the 50% number is an average. The younger it is you get when you get married, the more likely it is you get divorced. The older it is, the younger. Uh, the the, the sure less like this, yes. Because I, I, I honestly feel like the problem is with a lot of people trying to be too independent that they don't want to rely on another person. Oh, please, please, please. You know what? First of all, uh, you go ahead and rely on her. You go ahead. By the way, you're going to do it. It doesn't matter what I say. Go ahead and get married. But so you're going to find out the hard way like all these other people you've heard call the show. Of course, you're different because the two of you have a very special love. It's a love like no other love. The two of you understand love and caring and understanding like no one else. And while others are out there and they think they love each other, they know a lot less than you at 23 years old with your 21. Is she 21? 25. 25. She's a virgin at 25. Your 25-year-old girlfriend, the two of you know way more about love than people older than you. People who have experience being married and divorced, you two love each other so much. And the older people, they just don't understand what you already know. You've acquired knowledge. You know more than anybody else. The two of you have a very special love. A love unlike any other love that's ever been witnessed on planet Earth. The two of you walking hand in hand into the sunset, what does everybody else know? And just because so many people get divorced, and so many women screw around on their husbands, and so many women who had no sexual experiences at the prom or in college or anywhere else, later on wonder what they missed out on and then bang everything that moves when they turn 28 or 30 or whatever, that is not going to affect you because you know more than anybody about love. Isn't that right, Andre? No, I hope we know the same amount as those 40-odd percent who stay married. You, uh, but again, well, you know, I'm hoping I'm going to win the big spin this Saturday. I'm hoping. But you make seven figures. You don't hope that. You know what I mean. I hope Santa Claus is coming to town December 24th, okay? I hope so. I hope so, too. But he's probably not. 
The fact that you hope you'll be one of the 45% that stay married or whatever it is uh, doesn't mean that that's what's going to happen. Uh, there are people who hope they were going to make it across the street before they were hit by a bus. The fact that you hope for something doesn't mean it's going to happen. It's unlikely to happen. You understand? By the way, with one out of two marriages ending in divorce, those are the people who actually get divorced. Uh, it doesn't count all the people who stay married for the sake of the children, or who stay married because it's too expensive to get a divorce, or stay married because they're uh, they're just miserable and they, they they're depressed and they don't do anything about it. Uh, that, that's just the people who act on it. Well, out of the people you're talking about, how many people get married because they have to get married? Wait, well, I don't people... know how many do, but you're one of them. Tom like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Stop. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like you. Definitely don't like you. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Number one again in Southern California. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's not to say we're not doing well other places, but the numbers in SoCal came out today. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. This is Kyle. He's listening to the online stream in Minneapolis on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey Tom, how's it going? Doing okay. First time, long time, man. Thank you. Hey, I just got a quick question for you. Now, why do all these girls say they want a nice guy, but then? All of a sudden, you see him with the guy who treats him like total crap. Can you explain that to me? Well, that's like all the people. And this, I'm not making this up. If you ever, do you have a radio station in Minneapolis called like Mix or Variety or has a name like that, where they say things like they've got a bigger mix and a better variety of music? Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one of the great uh, stories in radio. It's like one of these inside radio stories. Uh huh. Is that uh, and people all of the time ask why do stations play the same songs over and over? So they did research on this, and they found out that people wanted to listen to a radio station with a bigger mix and a better variety of music. That's literally what they said. Right. But here's the thing: when stations tried to play a bigger mix of music and a better variety, people started tuning out because they wanted to hear their favorite song at the time they tuned in, and it, they had to wait longer and longer to hear their favorite song. Mm-hmm. So, essentially, a bunch of people got together and agreed, we'll just lie about it. We'll say we play a bigger mix and a better variety, and then play the same 12 songs over and over. Right. And people love it. And it's the same thing here. Women love to say they like nice guys, but they don't date nice guys. They date yeah. jerks. Right. Yep. I'll bet a lot of those women listen to stations called Mix. Gotcha. <laughs> I just... Don't understand women, Tom. Just when you think you found the good one, you know, the one you can trust. Nope. Well, that's my point. That's why you don't. You're better off leasing than owning. Right. You know, yep. you lease them, and then you you go fishing. You 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 catch one, you throw it back. So I guess as the saying goes, if it floats, flies, or messes around, <laughs> better to rent it. Or bleeds every twenty-eight days. <laughs> Trust something that doesn't die after it bleeds. That's right? right, exactly. Oh man, Tom, I love you so much, man. Thank you so much, Kyle. Take me out African tribal style. I don't think we have time for that. It's the end of the hour, but Kyle, I really appreciate your call. Our email address is tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.